But before you know, right? Yeah. And now you should hear it. I'm working. All right, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's 5:30. I know. it's just uh, minutes to approve for December 6th. Move it. The seal. Second. 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 Trish, any questions or concerns? Not all in favor. All right. All right, we have appointments three for water and sewer. Andrew Ryan, Flash, Herb Marshall, and Donald Holcomb. And I have a motion. motion. Second. Second. Trish, second. Hans, any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, department updates. Carl. Uh, I've given a written report, and uh, I really don't have much to add to it. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to try and answer them. I got any questions for Carl? I was just wondering, you mentioned on your report discussion of next steps for the master plan project. Is Are there any updates? Um, you know, uh, actually, like I said to last meeting, we've got the mechanicals pretty well figured out. Now we're trying to get through the, uh, the ref getting it to referendum, getting it to the legislature. So we're working with uh, some more council to try and devise a system that we can present to the legislature. I think we're at that crux right now. And I really would like to tell you when I think that would be completed, but I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, thank you. All right, Kyle, do you have anything? I have nothing to add to my written report. Anybody got anything for Kyle? Well, it looks like you were fairly busy. Good month. <laughs> How was that? Just out of curiosity? Time of year, certain times of year that you have to do more testing. Or? It's it's just the way it rolled out that it annually you fall into the same things. I'm going to pull a lot of that stuff into the summer next time because you know it was good that it was a warm December. Otherwise, it's kind of miserable. So I'll pull more gas stations earlier in the year. I didn't know if there was set times you had to do them. No, it's just a 12 month window has to be done in. Okay. Anybody else for Kyle? Trish. I was just wondering um, when you said you started a new position. November 15th, is that? Oh, that was that was a misprint from last year's December report. The gas stations and all that are the same. Okay. But that, yeah. I just saw that today when I printed that off. It's been a couple yeah. months. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Gary, Buildings and Grounds. Okay. Uh, you have my report. I got just a couple of things I wanted to mention. In addition, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a dry in my throat today, but anyway, uh, I'm looking at uh, purchasing the tractors that we budgeted for this year, the tractor for the uh, snow blowing and so on. Uh, looking at uh, the purchasing options that I have through either by board or source well. Uh, right now, I'm looking at either Massey Ferguson or New Holland tractors. If somebody's got an idea of something better that we can purchase uh, to some kind of a, uh, that meets our purchasing agreements, I'd be happy to hear about it. That's what's going on with the tractors. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up today, uh, Bob Shea and uh, Chairman Gould uh, both asked me to look into this. Well, actually, uh, I had a person approach me about uh, what's called a performance contract for, uh, for energy. Uh, I just want to bring you guys up to speed and remind uh, some of the people that have been here a while. In 2017, the uh, county uh, paid Wendell, uh, architect out of, out of uh, Rochester, to do an energy audit of our, all of our buildings. They recommended uh, $2.7 million worth of improvements that would have paid for themselves over 16.4 year, years. Uh, and uh, they ended up coming up, coming forward to us with what's called a performance contract. So they were gonna, uh, they were proposing to spend $1.3 million and have it, pay, have it pay for itself over a 15 year period. Um, those were the kind of the low hanging fruit parts of the uh, <coughs> audit. Um, there, I presented a resolution in December of 2017. Uh, it didn't get through the body. So basically that was kind of put on hold. I've been a, I was approached by uh, a per, another person just recently about this and I want to get guidance from the committee. Um, I'm gonna read what they say a performance contract is, this other company. Just so you know, uh, the performance contractor directly guarantees energy savings will be achieved. The projects are required to be self-funded from avoided costs 
reduce energy use and maintenance costs or what they typically use to justify these things. And uh, other facility improvements can be paid out of the savings as well if, if the county chooses to, to do that. Uh, now, just before the meeting here, Bob mentioned to me a good point. We're looking at this whole county office building project, and uh, this would be an ideal time to look at tying this work into the uh, into uh, uh, whatever we come up with for the for the county office building moving forward. Uh, the projected energy savings could help pay for the cost. Uh, like Bob pointed out too, there there are grants out there that we might be able to get to help with the cost of, of upgrading the uh, the building, at least certainly for the energy components of it. So I, I think that this all uh, kind of ties in together, and I kind of want to get some guidance from the committee, but I think it's something we should look into. Does everybody agree? Jim? Yeah, uh, so I, I think with the undertaking of the uh, county office building project, maybe those recommendations should be turned over to whoever the successful architect is and, and that be rolled in and incorporated into uh, the design aspect. If we were going to just do windows, then we would look at that. If we were just gonna do lighting or electrical, then maybe that would be something, it would be my opinion that we wait to see where the Project's going to go for the county office building. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a that's a really uh, good approach. Uh, just to share with you guys, this is the actual part of the Wendell uh, report. That's actually just the recommendations. Okay, the report itself is kind of like our COB report. You know, it's four hundred pages or whatever it is. I don't remember have it memorized, but these are the actual recommendations that were made. And and I think uh, that would be a perfect time to do it. And actually, I think we should also look at our other buildings at the same time and try to bring all of this in together with uh, energy improvements. So, okay. So, with regard to that, Gary, that statement, those other buildings, if we're not planning any major renovations, they could be looked at individually um, and, and, and see what kind of energy savings there would be, uh, you know, looking at lighting and uh, things like that. That's that's what the October of 2017 resolution was all about. I purposely left out of all the county office building stuff because uh, we, in 2017, as Chairman Gould said a hundred times, we're going to do something with the building, we're going to do something with the building. So we purposely have ignored that forever. So I actually already have that broken down. It's 1.3 million in the other buildings. We have done one project thanks to the planning department. They got a grant for the exterior lighting at the jail. We did complete that uh, project. But that's really the only major uh, uh, <laughs> energy improvement project we've done. That's the question. Does the energy audit, do we have a contract with whoever is going to conduct this? Is that how it works? Uh, the energy audit was done, it was done in 2017. But if you pay for that. It was, already, it was paid for half yep. by NYSERDA and half out of our pocket. Okay, now, the same thing would be again to be repeated. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they certainly will pay for half of uh, half of anything like that. But I think there are grants out there for energy improvements. There seems like there are always. Are. If we filed up on your recommendation, there would be an audit with a cost associated with it. I don't know how all this works. Okay. Uh, well, the uh, what we would need to do is we would have to. What I would suggest anyway is that we take the. We haven't changed anything. The energy. Okay. There's the energy yep. savings. We would have to come up with uh, actually specifications to bid out to contractors to perform the work, and then there's the two ways of handling it: are an architect that gives you a performance contract says, "Okay, I'm going to put some money in my pocket, but I'll guarantee you these savings." Okay, yep. and the other option is we hire them; they do the they they create the spec, and, and we and we move the project forward. We put all the money in our pocket. Now that's assuming that there really are savings. So it's a matter of whether you want to take a risk. If you want guarantee, you got you got to pay for it. If you don't want a guarantee, you okay. can revolve. There's no it. need to re-audit because nothing's changed. No. Okay. No. Yep. Gary, can you just update everybody about the meeting we had with the, the five uh, bidders the other day, or six bidders? Sure. Uh, basically, uh, we had a meeting down at the uh, uh, emergency management office with the potential bidders for the county office building project. We answered a series of questions to them. Uh, and we hope to hear back, uh, I believe the opening's on the 26th, the bid opening's on the 26th. So we'll know then who's planning on doing what. Just so everybody knows we really are moving quickly, as quick as possible. So we'll know on the 26th, 
what our options are, and then we'll be probably, well, Shereen's really handling spreading that project uh, and that RFP, but uh, should probably have a resolution coming forward in, in uh, February to award it. And I want to thank Jim and, and Lydia for being on that committee with us. They were both, Lydia was on Zoom and Jim was there in person. So thank you. But we'll update you as often as we get information on it. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think it makes a lot of sense to look at my CERTA and from my understanding the earlier we can bring them into the um, drawing and concept drawings, the better. Uh, I think there's new incentives that have come out through my CERTA for um, various elements of building design. Um, so that makes a lot of sense for, from my perspective. But one other thing I just wanted to ask about was this, at one point we had talked about um, with the digester at soil and water, the potential for capturing the waste heat and using that to um, heat the jail, heat water at the jail, I believe is, is how that worked. And um, I didn't want that to fall off the radar uh, and I wanted to see where, what your thoughts were on that. Um, <laughs> there's kind of two questions there. Basically, the, 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 that, is, that was considered as part of this recommendation. It is in there. Um, I mean, the digester stoves are running to my knowledge. It hasn't ran in about a year. Uh, not getting much heat right now. Uh, so going forward, hopefully there will be a more stable, you'd want to have a more stable source of heat. The pipes are in the ground, if, if it proves that they're acceptable. We'd have to do some modifications at the jail. Uh, and and it's, I, I, if I, I'm shooting from the hip here, but I believe it was $175,000 that it would take to, uh, to get that so you could utilize it, if I recall. But that is in the report here. It's in the Wendell report. And I would love for us as a body to consider looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that Tiger is going through a major overhaul right now. It's being rebuilt completely practically. So it'll be operating much more efficiently. Um, I think there will be opportunity there. Uh, I don't know what the next steps would be to, to look at that, but um, could be a potential energy savings uh, for, for that building. Right, so that's true. So Gary, where do we fall on all this? Whether it's building new, remodeling, renovating any county buildings with the new, you know, wanting to do away with numerous heat sources here in New York State within the next three or four years. Where does that leave us? Getting rid of heat sources? Yeah. I, I don't understand the question. The governor wants to do away with What's everything to be all, we all got a heat electric. electric. Oh, everything to be electric? Yeah, where uh, does that leave us? <laughs> that, would re that would require a whole different study, obviously, because when this was done, a lot of it was uh, still using natural gas because natural gas is cheaper than electricity. Uh, the other thing, in, in my humble opinion, I'll just say this, uh, uh, I don't know where all this electricity is coming from. We're not going to have. We're not going to be able to buy a gas-operated car in 2035. Uh, as recently as two years ago, I was getting paid to shut down the air conditioning at the county office building to keep the grid from browning out. Okay, not much, but I did get paid for it. How, how come all of a sudden now we've got enough to power every car out there and to convert every building to electric? I don't understand it. I totally agree, but that's my point. What are we? I mean, you know. Our higher up politicians love to just throw crap out there and okay, you're gonna do this. But if we don't, where are we going? I mean, we obviously need a study to figure out what the hell we're gonna do with their throwing everything out there. Right. So, so this, oh, we're moving forward. We're gonna do this. How do we do this when we don't even know what we're doing in plain English because we don't know what we're gonna be able to eat anything with. I mean, I heard today by 2025. That's two years from now, folks. <laughs> So, you know, we can throw some studies away and start restudying from the sounds of it. Or, or do municipalities not have to abide by it, just the average show taxpayer? I mean, I, I don't know. What's the answers? They, they, like I said, they, they throw it out there, but they don't give you the answers. So maybe we ought to think about that before we 
get too far into the weeds of this is we're going to spend this many millions and that many millions and then find out that we're wasting our money because we can't do that according to the new laws. Yeah. We, we could we could obviously uh, one thing we could do uh, is focus if we focus on the lighting components of all this and so and, and we, we ignored the natural gas parts we could we could spend quite a bit of money and get pretty low hanging fruit by converting to LED lighting all these lights a lot more expensive than LED lighting that's a no brainer really that we should be doing that's what we did at the jail in the parking lot you know yeah, yeah. converted everything to LED lights and it's going to save a boatload of money. And I got one more question too on the, the tractor park because that was my favorite part. Yep. Are we <laughs> are we locked into who we have to deal with? And we're not. We're not. Uh, our purchasing policy for for a purchase of that size either says sealed bid, or we have to go through state bid, or we have to go through a source well bid, or I'm hoping maybe possibly a uh, uh, by board bid. So you have to have some kind of a bid that's uh, accepted by uh, municipal agencies to, to buy. Uh, I really don't want to go out and do a, like a sealed bid because you might get the cheapest tractor out there that's come to the United States two years ago. There's no parts anywhere. Yep. And that's the cheapest thing. You got to buy that, right? I, I don't want to do that. I want, I'd rather stay with, you know, uh, uh, Massey Ferguson and New Holland, John Deere. <laughs> something like a, a, a make that I feel will be here and, and be able to support the parts going forward. Well, that's what I was getting at. You got to look at where it's coming from for service and warranty. Right. Because that makes, if you have to spend $2,000 more for something to get that, right. you're going to save way more than $2,000 in the long run. Yeah. Great. I've got two separate sheets that I work, spreadsheets I'm looking at the, the cost factor and I'm looking at the specifications. Right, right, line by line. I'm, I was brought up on a farm. I know a little bit specifications for tractors and what to look for. So it won't necessarily be the cheapest one, but actually, ironically, the Massey Ferguson and the New Holland are very similar in price. With with the uh, once you get either the buy board or the source well discount. Yep. All right, you want to do your resolutions? Sure. <laughs> And just uh, one resolution for the consideration of this evening. Uh, authorize the building of the ground department to hire a part time building maintenance mechanic to replace the part time building maintenance mechanic who was the one with the full time. Now, this actually happened last year. I've been looking for uh, actually two part time building maintenance mechanics ever since then. Uh, as you know, our resolutions expired at the end of the year. I did fill one of the two jobs, the second job was never filled. I want to keep that opportunity out there if somebody comes forward that we can hire. Uh, so I really would appreciate if we could approve this resolution. I've got money in the budget for it. If somebody comes in uh, that's qualified, I'd love to snap them up before they go somewhere else. I'll move it. Okay, Christina, go have a second. Okay. Brian, any questions or concerns? Jim? When, you, when you say, Gary, you got money in the budget, so it was a budgeted item. Yeah, they're budgeted <laughs> items. Uh, I have a, I, one of my budget lines part-time. The, the, so basically all of my partners are <coughs> online, but okay. they share that same amount of money. And, and this was included as one of the entries. Okay. I've got a question for you, Chris. So being this is a new year, this is why he has to bring it forward, even though it's been approved in the past. And it's budgeted. It's, it's, and it's, being budgeted. It's like well, well, it expired at the end of the year. It expired 12-31-22, uh, my resolution. I you know we've had this discussion. Language in there now. I know. Any other questions? Don't feel it will it'll be, it'll happen again. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Doug. Uh, good evening, everyone. My report is attached since I do have quite a few resolutions and a few of them are referenced in the report. I would take any questions on the report. Uh, about the department and the products we have going on uh, first, I guess. Anything for Doug? No. Okay. Before we go to the, or we'll, we'll go to resolutions, but what number? Let's separate that one out. Um, PWA? Eight. 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 Eight's moved. PWA has moved, just for the record, PWA has moved to planning, so that one is in our list. Um, it was added to our list uh, in error, so 
obviously I can't speak to that one and it will be it will show up on the planning uh, agenda, I'm assuming. Uh, so everything else, but everything else seven through 15 with the exception of eight are on our our actual resolutions on our list for this month. What was the one we were going to explain, Doug? Uh, the one that we wanted to dig into a little bit was 15. PW15, which is a, yep, authorizing agreement to complete design and construction documentation for repairs at Emerson Park. All right, so let's start with, let's do PW7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 as a bundle, unless somebody wants to separate any of them. Can we separate 12? 12, okay. All of them, but 12 and 15, unless somebody wants to separate another one out. Uh, okay, give me a motion for that. I'll move it. Second, Basile. Basile. All right, any questions on 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, or 14? Not eight. Or skip eight. <laughs> it's a pain being in there. All right, if not, all in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right, we'll do 12 then. Trish wanted that separated. Authorizing agreement with Friends of Emerson Park as promoter of the 23 Epic Concert Series. Can I have a motion for discussion? Move it for discussion, Basile. Um, second. second. Second, Christina. Discussion. Discussion. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the concert series. I know last year there were some uh, business sponsors, I believe. Um, and are, is that still part of the budget? Um, or is this the total budget for the concert series? Uh, the budget that's represented on our side of it is the cost uh, for the um, bands themselves and then outside of that the um, friends are actually doing all the scheduling for the bands for the food vendors uh, and then they are raising funds through some of their sponsorships to then back the, their support of the event um, throughout this whole season throughout the whole season yeah. in their turn are raising funds to support park projects in the future okay anybody else got a question on 12 if not all in favor aye aye any opposed? Carried. All right. 15. Authorizing agreement to complete design and construction documentation for repairs in Emerson Park. Um, I'm going to explain it first. Then we'll... Sure. Um, so the main sidewalk, which is the sidewalk that runs within Emerson Park from the entrance all the way down to the Emerson Park Pavilion, transits in front of the Mary Grant Theater. Uh, is in need of replacement. Um, we, we have a couple of areas there where we've had failures, several areas where we've had failures in the sidewalk. We want to address the whole um, the whole area at once. We've got some uh, areas obviously with, with degradation out there that we don't want to have an unsafe condition going into the future. Associated with that project is all the lighting that is probably pre-1920. Um, so the lighting that's there, um, obviously we've been uh, repairing it as we've been going along, but there's a lighting replacement there. So with the complexity of it, meaning sidewalk, uh, having to be rehabbed a significant area of it, and then having to replace the infrastructure at the same time and address also a drainage issue that's there. Um, we decided that the, the best alternative for us for a long-term fix for it would be to have a design done of the entire area. So we have a spec that we can go out uh, to, uh, to bid with. So basically it's the sidewalk replacement that's there. Um, it's actually creating a non-existent sidewalk right now that goes out to uh, 38A where there's a crosswalk that DOT installed. Uh, so we want to connect that so you can get over to the museum on uh, a safe path of travel if not the exit road of the park as it currently exists. Um, so those two projects, we want to put those together and address the safety issue, get to new lighting in place, uh, both of which are well beyond their, obviously their usable span uh, so that we have uh, better accessibility, address some ADA issues that we have, that we could have there with the failure of the sidewalk that's um, in that area that's obviously very highly trafficked in front of the theater and then all the way down to, almost down to the pavilion. A little bit of that was replaced when they rehabilitated the pavilion a few years ago, but it only comes out so far, so we need to come back up to where they rehabbed in 2011. And so because of the complexity of the combination of the utilities and the sidewalk, and the scope of it, um, we're going to need to go out to bid, and I can't go out to bid without bid documents signed for. So basically, we're speeding the process up a little, which we can do if it's correct. So um, the the firm that we've received a quote from right now uh, just completed the island, the work on the island. 
Um, also, some of the work over at White Bridge, that if you've gone by the park and seen some of the dredging and the pathways, the roadway establishment over there um, to move our boat docks off the island to deal with the safety issue that we have with pedestrian traffic and vehicle traffic on the island. So we're trying to address that as we go down the road of doing further development on Doval Island. Um, that firm, we've been very successful with them. Uh, they have the bandwidth to do it in a very short amount of time. We would obviously like to have this completed, which is a very short turnaround before the theater season starts, since it obviously impacts their building. Um, so in that case, there is a provision in the public works uh, purchasing policy that says if it's in the interest of, of public safety, uh, in the interest of, of, of public welfare, we're able to not necessarily use the traditional RFP, RFP process in order to expedite that. And this is the opportunity that we're trying to use that in order to make sure we can go through with that. And I'm comfortable with the engineering firm that has said they have the time and the bandwidth to do it because we have two existing contracts with them right now that we've had great success with and we'd like to move forward with them if we can. So motion for discussion. If anyone has anything? I'll move it. Christina, can I have a second? Second for seal. Anybody got any questions for Doug on this now that he's explained it? I Christian. Would this be a new contract or would it be like a contract modification? This would be a separate contract. A separate contract. It's not, it could be written as an addendum, but this is actually a separate contract because it's a discrete project and because we want the ability to kind of carve it out and say, this is what's there. We put money in the budget this year for the actual construction uh, of that. Um, and we're also going to use professional services money that we have that we have for that contract separately that are both budgeted for, but we need a contract for this as a discrete it's a discrete project. I assume Don Carr is not here anymore. I assume our county attorneys look at mm -hmm. our policy Correct. that it meets those that. criteria. Yep. Yep. You, you want to chime in on any of this, Chris? Can you hear us? Got to turn his mic on. You're muted. Can't hear you. Can you hear us, Chris? You're muted. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, though. Unmute. Huh. Oh. He's not muted. He gave up. It's not muted, but you're not. It's not working. We can't hear you. Somebody keeps blowing late. All right, so you're good with it. We know. Here's a thumbs up. Obviously, obviously, you've had that discussion with the attorney's office. So. The conversation that I had was actually with Rich Graham, but yes, we were the ones that went through, I went through the policy with Rich. We kind of identified that section that's probably applicable in this case because of the time frame that we want to have the repair done before the public use in the summer. Which obviously makes sense, so people aren't. What is the time frame for that project to out? Uh, we would like to have at least the immediate uh, area in front of the theater completed by their May. It's a May start date for the theater. It's usually mid May. So, it's a rather straightforward design project, but I still need to have something to get bids for. Yeah. Anybody else with anything for? Doug. If not, all in favor of PW15? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> all right. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Oh. One, one thing. Okay, Doug, if you can say, or, or Christine, are you guys staying afterwards? We'll talk about some ARPA things for Emerson Park. Yeah, I can stay. Sure. All right, Brian, highway. <clears throat> Don't have anything to add to my report either. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions for Brian? You guys just have anything to. The reports are so thorough that we're getting. Yeah, you just put it all in writing and that's it. Like, report, right? All right. Any, I, I do have one. Yeah. Brian, can you explain? We got a meeting coming up with you tomorrow, I believe, next day about the motor pool. Can you kind of explain to everybody what's going on with that? I think sending them up, but what's going on with the motor pool right now? The resolution's in tonight to fill the, the automotive position. Um, I'm filling it right now with one of my uh, heavy diesel mechanics and one of my plow truck drivers when it's not snowing out. And so far, things are going along pretty good. Um, I think we got a pretty good handle on it now with the new scheduling system and everything. So, 
Well, are you still thinking about moving up to York Street? Yes, midsummer we should be able to be back there. Thank you. All right, hang on before we. Chris wanted to talk about PW8. But I told him we can't hear him. He says he's called in. How's that? How's that? Great, right, beautiful. Now we can hear you. That's okay, okay, good. Thank you. He needs to mute himself now. Yeah. Now, now you got to mute your computer or whatever. I turned my, turn my speaker off on my phone. Did that help? Yeah. All right, so what about PW8? PW8 was uh, supposed to be a planning resolution. A planning resolution. Um, it was incorrectly identified as PT rather than PL, and that's why it's here. But uh, having discussed this with several folks this afternoon, um, it appears as though this easement is a requirement for one of the grant funding sources, and they really want to go out to bid. Uh, and I'm glad to see Mr. Miller here. He may be able to offer additional insight, but uh, based on the conversations that I had today, it appears that this might best be treated as an emergency resolution. Uh, it, it's, it's a tiny piece of property over there. They're just looking for an easement to put in a uh, little portion of a sewer line. Um, they've got phase one done. Now they're just looking to connect it, um, but they do need an easement and this would allow that. And I'm gonna to look to Mr. Miller to see if uh, he would like to add anything further. Yeah, as, as was pointed out there uh, for this whole entire EDA grant we have for the entire sewer line project, we have very strict requirements uh, to get through this phase here. And part of that is getting this easement through. <coughs> so we cannot go out to bid for the project. And you know, we're already maybe a month or so behind on the project just because we're going through all of these EDA requirements. And, Last thing we want to do is not go by the process. Otherwise, we're putting you know million plus dollars in that grant money's at risk. So getting this through will allow us to get out to bed. So once we're through bed, we can really get moving from there. So I guess my question, Chris, does it have to go through both committees or just planning? Just planning. No, no. I, I'm hoping actually it can be dealt with as an emergency resolution, which in this case uh, it shouldn't have been under your committee but the more legislators i can address the better uh it would actually require aileen's signature and i hope that we can have this very same discussion at planning um you know we've got the, the chair of ways the chair of the oversight committee which is aileen mcdam coleman chair of the legislature mr gould um i believe the minority leader aileen um and that'll be that'd be it Majority leader. Oh, majority leader, right. Mr. Didio. I have a question. I'm still confused. Let me go over it here. <laughs> um, Lydia's got a question. Lydia. Who owns the property that we're looking for that easement? The, the, the county owns it. Thank you. And what, what we are going to do is, is grant an easement for the contractor to be able to dig up a portion of our property, throw a sewer line down in there, connect what's already been built in phase one and run it down Eagle Drive to the city's hookup where at some point in the future, my understanding is that the line will then be turned over to the Keuga County Water and Sewer Authority where they will maintain and operate the sewer system. But you know, legally, uh, it does need an easement and it's a simple document. It gets filed down in Sue Dwyer's office. We can draft it up tomorrow, uh, provided we have the authority to do so in an emergency resolution and the IDA can get started. All right, so I'm still, I mean, do we, we don't need to do anything here in this committee, right? No, no I it's just, my, my intention is to have as many legislators informed of the process as I possibly can because if it's dealt with as an emergency resolution, you know, oftentimes you only get the five legislators that are aware of it. And this allows me to inform as much of the board as I can. And if there are any objections to, to hear those and answer any questions that legislators may have before it's signed. Okay. Thank you. 
So now we will move to Brian. Okay. <clears throat> uh, PW2, extend the bids for vendors that uh, wanted to extend their 21 bids. It turned out to be only four. <clears throat> have a motion for PW2? Move it. Have a second. second. Brian, any questions? None at all in favor? Aye. Aye. PW3. PW3 is to fill the automotive mechanics position at the motor pool. Have a motion. Move it. Yeah, have a second. Second. Chris, any questions on that one? Jim? Is, is, it, is this a budgeted position? Yes. <coughs> We're funding it by defunding the budgeted position of foreman. Okay. Ready? Ryan, how hopeful are you to uh, to, to get it done? Um, I have two individuals in-house that are interested in it. So hopefully we can fill their positions on the backfill so the plow truck drivers. But, Good news. Yeah. Anyone else? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, PW4. PW4 is the paving list for 2023. Move it. Move it on. Second. Basile. Any questions? I just, Question. how do you generate that list? Is it? I have a seven year plan with all the roads on it. Okay. These are the roads that we have prepped last season for this coming up season for paving. So if you drive around and you go to them, to them over all the culverts, you know he's going to pave it this year. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing a lot of that over way. And just to follow up, Brian, that plan, how, did, how does that plan get generated? Is it, is it I, you work with the towns and villages on that? Or no, it's, it's in -house? county, yeah. It's just the county roads. County roads. Yep. Okay. Thanks. That's where you drive around, and if you start going off the road because it's so bad, that one gets put on the list, right? Other scored, yeah. yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? All right. Five. PW5 is the purchase of the highway equipment that was budgeted in the 2023 budget. Move it. Deal. 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 Second. Okay. Christina, she beat you. Any questions on that one? Shouldn't be because we all know what it's budgeted for. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. And PW6. PW6 is the 23 chip seal list surface treatment. Have a motion. Hold it. Um, it's got a second. Second. Christina, any questions on that one? Oh, is that the ones that you paved last year? Um, some of yeah, some of the coal mixed up. Yes, it's resealed this year. And the rest of it's just maintenance. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Anything else, Brian? Nope. That's it. You got anything for Brian? Okay. Yep. You're going to move, you're going to hire the staff, and eventually <coughs> transition that staff to York Street. Yes. Have the full operation there and not have any operation. Correct. At the city. It'll be a lot more manageable for me to do it that way. This sort of completes the beginning of why started to begin with combining the city and no not no. really it's actually undoing what oh done it is right several years ago that was forgotten about because there's no city involvement right right correct which there really hasn't been um i believe some of it was because they ran into some labor issues with the unions as far as the staffing as, as far as bringing the staffs together and everybody working on whatever vehicles are needed is the story i've been given so I'm going to assume when we move it to York Street, we're just going to be county. Just county and outside agents. Oh, Correct. you're not moving it to Genesee Street. You're moving it back to York Street. Correct. And that's undoing whatever initially was Correct. thought of. To, okay, that's what I was confused about. Originally, they had a shared service yep. plan idea that they were going to build a new building for the yep. city and the county jointly. Yep. And things fell apart. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> All right, has anybody got anything else for... This committee. Huh? Everybody hands. Second trip. I won't even ask if you got any questions on that one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye
be a lot of it. A lot of it's going to be like some.
Members present, Jim Basile, Christina's here, Trisha's here, Brian's here, and Lydia's here, and Mark is here. So uh, let's open a meeting with a minute to approve on December 6th um, in a motion. Hold it, Mark. Second. Basile. Second, Basile. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Um, appointments to the Cuba County Planning Board. Uh, Mr. Elliott and Ms. Post, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Carried. Um, Cuba County Workforce Development Board, uh, Mr. Murphy. Okay. Second. This is awesome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, department updates. We'll start with uh, <laughs> good evening, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, happy to be in the committee. Um, in addition to the one resolution I have tonight, I just want to touch on a couple of updates <coughs> in a couple of minutes. Um, the New York Forward grant applications that we did for the four villages, we still haven't heard yet. So, kind of expected it before the end of last year, but. We'll see uh, when the governor uh, announces those. We're hopeful that we might get one of those. Uh, we're continuing on a number of land use planning with our villages and towns. We're doing the weed sport zoning ordinance, town of truth zoning ordinance, town of conquest comprehensive plan, the village of Aurora zoning ordinance. Um, we're following up the Cayuga, uh, village of Cayuga local waterfront revitalization plan and the village of Fairhaven, town of Sterling, local water <coughs> revitalization plans are still with the bill, with the Department of State being reviewed. We expect them to be approved soon. We had done one for the village of Union Springs a couple of years ago. And based on these, these local waterfront revitalization plans, we recently submitted some grant applications. And I'm happy to say that uh, the LW20, LWRP 2023 grant for the town of Sterling Community Connections Trail, uh, which is a component project in that Cayuga, um, I'm sorry, Sterling Fairhaven LWRP was awarded $103,807 in funding in the last C CFA round. I was prepared by senior planner Carrie Terwilliger working with Jim Basile and his community. And Carrie also prepared an LWRP capital improvement grant for the Cuga Lake Blue Way uh, <clears throat> with projects that are located in the village of Cayuga. I mean, I'm sorry, the village of Union Springs, uh, which was part of that LWRP that we completed about three years ago. And that was awarded $63,045. So Carrie will be you know, working with those communities, with those projects get those projects done. Um, and the reason I wanted to highlight is like sometimes you do these planning grants, but they turn into the opportunity to seek capital funding and get capital grants so our communities can do these types of improvements. Um, just to let you know, the Erie Canal rewatering project, I noted in my report that we were looking to schedule a February public information meeting. We've scheduled that. It will be Wednesday, March 8th at 6 p.m in the cafeteria at the Weesport High School. Also, uh, as I said, we're working closely with Michael Miller and his staff and Jenny Haynes over at the city of Auburn and some other folks on the Micron working group for site selection. Uh, we've met three times since December and we're actually meeting this Thursday. Uh, we're gonna have a, like a two and a half hour work session uh, looking at GIS maps and uh, the corridors and so on and so forth. <coughs> I got two more updates and I'll try to make it quick. Uh, one is the broadband. You've heard about these FCC requests for updates and corrections to the maps that they circulated. It's important because these maps will help dictate where the federal infrastructure money from 2021 gets allocated down to the states and down to the localities. So there are two versions of broadband data that have been circulated relative to these FCC broadband map. The FCC data, which is called FCC fabric data, and that's data and maps. Here's where the served and underserved 
places are in New York State, in Cayuga County, in the Central New York region, et cetera. And then the New York Public Service Commission released their own state-based maps to say, here's where our maps say people are served and underserved. Um, as you recall, this county participated with Regional Planning Board in 2020, going in towards the end of 2021, to do on the ground, driving around where the served and unserved places in Cayuga County. And they did that with Portland and Oswego and Madison County and Onondaga County as well. So um, Regional Planning Board created an account to secure the FCC data uh, on our behalf. Uh, we secured the Public Service Commission data and did the appropriate paperwork <clears throat> to allow us to share that data with regional planning. Regional planning is taking these two sets of data and comparing it to the mapping that they did here with ECC technologies under their own grant. And they are preparing the response, they call it a challenge, uh, which is due this Friday, the 13th. Um, that, that response, trying to give the most accurate picture of served and underserved places in Cayuga County um, will, is the best way to position ourselves for the maximum amount of opportunity to you know, go out there and try to secure these funds when they come down the pike. Now, I know you'll probably ask, can I have a copy of that map? I don't wanna say no, and I don't wanna say yes. When we secured this data, we had a, you know, I had to prick my finger, mm -hmm. sign with blood that I wouldn't share with anybody. So I'm not sure how, you know, it's got people's addresses and, you know, all that stuff on it. So I'm not sure about how well I could share it. I will look to try to share it and see if I can, you know, share it. Cause I know you're all interested in looking at it and saying like, what does it look like? Um, so that's going on. Uh, I, I, this, I, I, I'm really glad that regional planning stepped up. They dedicated three staff members and because they had the other maps, and because we provided them with all the GIS files, I think we're gonna have a very robust response to this FCC request. Can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> that was my question. The work that was done by ECC, this really will enhance the information that they had. It's not two separate things. and it, It's not two separate things. And I, and I suppose if you look at the ECC stuff and say, that's the best uh -huh. uh, data because they actually drove around, uh -huh. that's going to be the sort of the baseline that they compare the addresses for the FCC maps and the Public Service Commission maps. Because the FCC maps are going to be public driven if you public participates. Well, yes, uh, the FCC has pushed it out. You saw some of those emails saying individuals can go on the website and say, well, that's wrong. I, I don't have broadband available to me, et cetera. And, you know, there's been some encouragement of people to do that. But, you know, we're trying to get a comprehensive countywide response to this so that we could, uh, you know, better position ourselves. Because, you know, I think as Jim Basile said the other day, Supply chain companies from Micron are not going to go anywhere where there's not broadband. <clears throat> and probably housing for people that are coming from Micron are probably not going to build houses anywhere where there's not broadband. So, um, and I just wanted to give you that up that update. Um, so I do have one resolution, Mr. Bisfield. I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Shea. I was just once once you have the survey data and you know where the gaps are. In order to really bridge that and to actually get broadband to the county, we're going to have to come up with some strategies and expertise and money. To, I mean, the survey's good, but there's going to be a larger investment that has to be made. I, I don't know what the criteria for the infrastructure funding coming for broadband is going to require. I am sure that is going to require matching funds by the localities. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I don't know what the status of the prior middle mile application was that Dave Botar yeah. came and said, right. I'm going to put this application in. And Cuba County didn't authorize or put any money up for that. He was saying, you know, we're going to put this application in. If it comes, it's probably going to require 
some money. So you might want to. And the status of that middle mile is unknown yet. It's unknown. I'm going right. to try to run that down with Dave. Oh, that was my question. And when Mr. Botar was here, Botar was here, uh, he was just asking for a letter of support of right. interest that we, and of course, I think we, we did that for him. That's correct. Yeah. Jimmy, do you have a question? Uh, just on the uh, <clears throat> RP, which is getting off track there, but, um, you probably saw all the emails that came through, but the town of Sterling, uh, which includes the village of Fairhaven, can't say enough about the work that uh, Gary did with us. Yes, thank and, you. And, working on, and, and it was a process that was more than a year, I think, in developing that plan and stuff. So we're hoping this first success of a grant uh, to do the study on the trails, which will connect us all to the county trails, and we'll get people up to the waterfront, and then <clears> the <throat> county will be uh, will will go well. So thank you very much. You're welcome, and and uh, we're really glad that there is such an active group in in Fairhaven and Sterling that's pushing the trail, and really it's a it's a grassroots project, which is great. Okay. Well, uh, Steve, you want to talk about your resolution? Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Go ahead. See you behind everybody. But, um, just thank you for that update, Steve, and the work that you're doing thing on that broadband initiative. I remember when Dave was here, there were different models that he was talking about in terms of ownership of the system and partnering with different providers. And it sounded like those were things that we could need to talk through and think through as a body. Uh, and I was wondering at what point do we start getting into those details and start out of the system? It's, it's hard to have those conversations and make those decisions. It's a lot of information to come out of the legislative body and process and come to some conclusions. I also think that um, knowing what the grant opportunities out there, what the brackets around those are and what the requirements for those are, will probably might uh, favor one model over another model. So perhaps this body can ask Dave Botar, you know, now that we get past this FCC thing, maybe to come back to this body and, and sort of give an update of where he sees the landscape right now for broadband and the opportunities. Um, I think we have to remain engaged and we have to pursue the funding. Yeah, Does that help? absolutely. Yeah. I just remember Onondaga was doing it one way. I think Madison was doing it another way. Right. And there were different different considerations there. Um, yes. But great. Thank you. Okay. Um, jump to your resolution, Steve. And if you indulge me, uh, I think we'll uh, let the um, attorney talk about PL2 when Steve gets done, and we'll get that business out of the way. And uh, only two resolutions. That was PL1, Steve. PL1 is authorization to create and fill the position of associate planner within the planning and economic development department and abolish a senior planner position. Uh, senior planner Carrie Terwilliger, who I was just referring to, has been at the top of her grade for five years now uh, as a senior planner. I would like to move her up to the next step on the ladder and start her, you know, so that she continues to have career opportunities and keep her here. Um, the, as you, you look at the resolution, the, the numbers in the resolution, it actually represents like a $677 increase over what she would get if she didn't get this promotion, but it starts her on that, that next step on, under associate planner and gives her some more seniority. Also, I have her now because we have some young planners coming into the office and they're new. They're working on some of the projects. She is supervising them and then reporting to me. So that's so now she has taken on supervisory responsibility, which generally the senior planners don't do as much. A bit, Lydia. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion for PL1 is carried. You have a question, Jeff? No. Okay. Well, thank you, Steve. Is that thanks? Sorry for taking so much time. Sorry. Fine. Um, <clears throat> Council Palermo, did you want to talk about PL2 while we're here? Uh, yeah. If uh, is there anybody here that didn't hear what I said in public works? I don't no. think so. 
If anybody has any questions now that they've had a chance to digest it, uh, perhaps either I or Mr. Miller could answer. And a motion to PL2. I'll move it, Mark. Second. And Trish? I have a question. Uh, I thought they were going to do it as an emergency line. resolution. Yeah, right. Okay. So I'm just wondering if we need to do it here. We can support it here, I guess. Take your vote back. <laughs> I can send my vote. vote on this, Chris? The, the rec, uh, not necessary if uh, the five members sign, but to have the record reflect the fact that the planning committee did support the project, I think uh, makes it easier for those members of the group of five that were are not here. Okay, I had a first and a second. I will send my motion. That's what's required. And Bob, you'd have heard. I think Trish seconded, right? Okay. You'd have to resend it. We're all in favor. So it's really just a, just a motion to support this for the uh, emergency resolution. Mr. Basile? Yes, sir. I can interrupt for just a minute. Uh, the, there's always a possibility that, you know, one of the five chooses not to sign, in which case uh, the resolution does not take effect uh, and it would proceed. I don't believe that it requires ways and means. There's no money involved. Um, but that would allow it to be brought to the floor. Any legislator would also have the ability to do that. But if it came from planning, that would be preferable. So the, the motion is, I'd like to make a motion to move uh, PL2 uh, as, uh, as it's been submitted. Uh, as if, if it doesn't go through as an emergency, then we'll uh, bring it to the full way. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. With the department updates, I believe it's uh, Kelly James up. Happy New Year. How are you doing, Kelly? How are you? Um, a couple of things to add to my report. In in my report, I mentioned that we are working on a public speaking workshop. Uh, curriculum has been developed. We also decided we see there's a, a strong need for computer workshops and computer training again in our office. We have the laptops. We are going to start utilizing them. We are writing lesson plans right now for a series of three. So computers, computer 101 is what we're calling it. So we're really starting out with basics. So the first one would be basic computer training. Um, email, we see that we have a lot of inappropriate emails. You would be amazed at some of the email addresses and they're putting those on resumes and applications. So we have identified <laughs> a for so can you share some of those? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think we need a whiteboard. I can, so, I can do what I can. Um, so we're gonna do an email, email basics and then internet safety. Uh, so, you know, opening emails that aren't safe or um, viruses and things like that. Things that I, I open, IT will say, don't open those emails. Oh, what is this email? So email internet safety uh, is going to be the third in the series. So we're excited. We have lots of plans developed for all three. Uh, I'm going to launch those. We're going to we're going to pilot them with our DSS groups, and then we're going to open them up to the public uh, probably in February. So that's new and exciting. I've done computer workshops in, in several years. We now have QGWorks has a YouTube channel. Uh, there is nothing on it right now. Uh, we're planning to do podcasts and post videos and clips of workshops and uh, maybe some talk show kind of, you know, we're trying to capture uh, not just the young, but also, you know, we're, we're kind of behind. We have Facebook and we're posting more on the county's website, but I think having a YouTube channel and having followers, we have two right now, my community, one of them, um, but that's, that's the hope. So I'm going to bring that information to the next, uh, next meeting. So hopefully you'll follow us or on YouTube, how, how, how we call it. Um, so those are a few things that we have going on. I'm seeing a lot of collaboration right now, uh, really in the new year. Um, I met with uh, the New York State Department of Corrections. 
has really, uh, they launched an initiative to help parolees go back to work. Uh, I met with Greg Daly, to gave him a tour of the Career Center, and it was uh, refreshing because, you know, instead of reinventing the wheel, we're going to collaborate and use our services to help them. So if someone's uh, on parole or coming out of prison, uh, we will, you know, do an initial assessment, see what their needs are, provide workshops for them, let them utilize the services that we have rather than Greg and his team creating something from the ground up. Uh, we're also willing to create workshops based on their needs that aren't some that, that aren't what we are already offering. Uh, so that's that's exciting and new um, with the Department of Corrections. Uh, next thing is I met with Deborah Dennis. She's amazing, the youth bureau director. Um, she met with me and two members of my team, and we talked about um, our youth program and educated her on what's going on, and then brainstormed some ideas to serve additional youth within the community. And uh, one of the things that we talked about is, is bringing back, possibly, hopefully, a leadership event that we started in 2008, 2009. Uh, the Youth Bureau at the time was a sponsor, and we uh, continued that event yearly until about 2015. Uh, we don't have money in our budget to do that. And so we had different sponsors, and the Youth Bureau was one of them. It was called Jumpstart 10. Uh, we focused on targeted 10th graders from every school district in Cuyahoga County. We brought, I, I want to say 15 or 20 kids from each 10th grade in each school district arranged for busing and transportation. And it was an all day event at, at CCC, which was our venue. We hired a keynote speaker. His name was Carl Labbing and he's from Las Vegas and he's a youth motivational speaker. I was highly motivated by Carl Ladding. Um, and in fact, if you go on his website, the picture on the um, on his website is, in fact, our leadership or our our, our Jumpstart Ten event uh, at CCC. So that was that was amazing to see that. We would like to potentially talk about partnering and bringing that back, um, you know, and, and looking at ways to do that with the youth bureau and other sponsors. And the goal is employing it. So the goal the goal because they're in tenth grade. For this particular event, the goal is really about uh, career exploration and leadership um, and some industry exposure. We, at the end of the event, what the event was is it, it kicks off with the motivational speaker and then they branched out. We utilized the leadership Cayuga classes as some of our um, instructors for the classes. Each group we take, we take so we take Southern Cayuga, we take Cato, we take Auburn, we take Moravia. And we split up the kids and we had a program. So all the kids from different school districts are now mingled together and they go from session to session. So um, one might be on uh, job searching or careers, one's on leadership, one we had four or five different topics. And then to end it, there was a career fair and a human services um, fair in the gym. So, and we provided lunch. So it's, it's really more about exploration than it is employment because they are 10th grade doesn't mean that we have to follow the same and we don't have to target 10th grade, but we did um, for years, but we're open to, um, to any age, essentially. Um, the other things that we talked about uh, with the Youth Bureau, with, with, um, with Deborah, is maybe entering into something such as a job shadow that would be paid with an incentive since we don't have enough funds in our budget to do that. It also might be to enroll more kids in our in our work experience or training. That would lead to employment. Um, so we, we talked about a lot of different ideas. I was a great conversation. Uh, she contacted me today, said she would like to nominate me to sit on the youth board. Um, if that so happens, I graciously accept that because I'm, I'm very interested in that and I'd be honored to do that. Um, so we talked a little bit about that today. Uh, some additional collaboration. So I, I met with Amy Durfee. She's the director of workforce innovation through Center State last week. And I wanted to specifically talk to her about our Micron workforce development work group. And uh, with that, if we're on track and if she sees that we're kind of in line with what other counties are doing in, in the region, um, and she's pleased you know, in terms of what we've done so far. I invited her to join our work group and she did attend our meeting that we had yesterday, which was our second meeting for, for Micron. Um, and she'll plan to come moving forward. So we are on track, uh, lots of conversation. Um, Mike and Stephanie are part of the committee. Uh, 
one thing that I really want to point out is that, you know, as workforce partners and as a workforce system, we all work together. Uh, we've never all come to the table at the same time. So I, it's more of a roundtable discussion every month um, with some guided topics and conversation. In aside from Micron, it has really, really given us the opportunity to talk about workforce issues now. I don't know why this group didn't exist before Micron and why Micron pushed us to do that, but it did. Um, so we've identified you know, transportation and childcare as issues and, and a lot of different ideas coming across from different um, partners. And so it's, it's, it has a lot of positive aside from what we're doing for Micron. We're really at this point trying not to put the cart before the horse. We can't say, okay, you know, we need to fill this many jobs and these are the job titles. We don't know yet. We don't know what Micron means. <laughs> so uh, what we're doing is just organizing our information, uh, starting to put together things of what we already know, what we already have, so that when we can hit the ground running, we can identify the gaps and, and where we're going to fill in with that. So I will provide a, a more detailed report on that when we meet on January 17th. Um, for our full micron meeting. And I think I've pretty much covered what's in my report and a couple additional things. If there's any questions. Trish? I, hi. Um, thank you for your report. Uh, I was wondering your work with corrections. Um, do you, regarding the employers in the community, how receptive are they? hiring individuals that have a criminal history and is that part of part of the work that you're doing is trying to build those bridges and what does that picture look like so we've always worked with um folks coming out of prison parole probation and that's something that we've always done even prior to this uh new you know conversation with Greg um we have a federal bonding program through the Department of Labor that we can work with them and getting bonded so that there's not as much of a risk when they're going to work, uh, with, you know, going into employment. Um, I see that some employers are, some are more receptive than others to hiring, you know, depending on what type of work it is and the type of employer it is. Um, I see a lot of employers that are open to that. Uh, we also can use OJT to incentivize an employer because we've reduced their risk of hiring whether it's it's an offender or or not, we can reduce the risk with OJT, and we'll use that as an incentive, especially for somebody that's just coming off or you know on parole or probation. Because hey, you can hire this person at fifty percent of the cost. Now your risk is significantly lower, and we've given this person a chance, uh, and then that and that opens them up to giving someone a chance again. So there are some employers that aren't interested, and there are, there are some that are. But we definitely work with employers on um, being a little more open to hiring. You know, offenders. Anything else? Thank you, Kelly. Mike, you're up next. Good evening, everyone. Everyone's doing well. So, uh, this is a quick update here for the information you have in front of you. And some of this information we still have coming in to wrap up uh, 2022 is you know, we're going through the end of year. There's you know, a lot of meetings we had wrapping up. But as it was, um, and the data we had when this was submitted last week is the existing businesses uh, we met with over 2022 was 73, and entrepreneurs assisted were 58. Um, not quite the goal we were hoping for, but also with the understanding we haven't been at full staff, but some be a different case for 2023 here. Um, but you do have the supper, supplemental uh, information provided in your packets as well. On uh, different notes here, um, myself, Steve Flynn, Shereen, and Jenny Haynes. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Jenny Haynes, she works for the City of Auburn Planning and Economic Development Office. Uh, we met up uh, with the other regional county representatives um, regarding Micron. This was put together by David Botar up in Syracuse. Um, specific guests that were there was Rob Simpson of Center State CEO, Robert uh, Petrovich of the Onondaga IDA, as well as Kevin Yunus of Empire State uh, Development. It's basically the number two. Uh, Hope Knight is the lead for Empire State Development. That's the entire state. Kevin Yunus is number two. So it was 
great to have him there as well. Um, this was really uh, a discussion around the regional impact of what this is going to mean and some of uh, the key items discussed with the importance of site acquisition and readiness, workforce development, um, ongoing studies, housing and infrastructure. Uh, but they also made a really strong point around uh, incentives and investments that the county can help provide as part of attraction purposes to participate in the opportunity that is here. Um, and this is really demonstrating good faith of, do you wanna be a part of this opportunity or not? Um, I've been really, really encouraged to be working with Kelly, Steve, and our many other partners in this uh, process here from the various subcommittees. But um, as Kelly pointed out here, and I'm sure Steve would agree, is that while a lot of our efforts are focused around the micron opportunity, the fact that so many of our partners have not been getting together, but now they are, this is great for our existing businesses that are currently here today, because that's a big part of our discussion while Micron is a big shiny thing. We're also keeping an eye on our existing businesses and our efforts to you know, help sustain them as well. So this, the timing of it has uh, been great, but also you know, really uh, encouraging to take a look at. As Steve mentioned earlier, we're going to be basically locking ourselves in a room uh, in a couple of days here to really discuss uh, site acquisition. Um, to go through that. And as Kelly also mentioned, there's various other subcommittees that are meeting uh, on a monthly basis here with a larger group being orchestrated by Shireen um, on a monthly basis. Moving on from that item there, the Cuyahoga County Small Business Grant Program uh, that was originally set to end on December 15th was extended through the end of the year, December 31st. Um, of the total eligible applications we received, um, the last figure I had was 55. The breakdown of that is as followed. Um, 34 from Auburn, four from Fairhaven, three from Sterling, two from Fleming, Ledger, and Port Byron. And this is gonna be a mouthful here. One received from the various areas of Aurelius, Cato, Cayuga, Mens, Newton Springs, Victory, and Wheatsport. We'll be having a more uh, depth update on how that whole program is continuing to flush out in the next month here. Um, we're continuing uh, to organize stakeholders between the various towns and the city around wholesale water rates that are impacting our area, area businesses. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you know, rates were adjusted in the latter half uh, from the city of Auburn. Um, and this was a bit of a shock to some of our larger employers in the area. So we've been pulling together today. As a matter of fact, we had a discussion earlier and we included um, folks from the city and surrounding towns, but we also had water and sewer there as well. So we're really trying to keep an eye on how this is impacting our uh, larger employers in the area and what can be done to not only address the immediate issue, but a longer term one here. So it's not being a detriment for economic development, but actually an incentive. Um, moving on here, Maureen Reeser uh, over the last month was able to meet with a larger business up in Sterling about an expansion project, as well as uh, had the chance to meet with the Fairhaven Chamber of Commerce, and that was by suggest by uh, Mr. Basile over there. Um, it was a good meeting, as I understand, and has provided for their collaboration going forward. Um, two more items, I promise they'll be quiet. Um, intended the travel unity summit. Karen Cool is not here this evening, but I, I thought it was great what she was able to put together for the community here. Very well attended. A lot of folks from out of state to come visit um, Auburn and Keokie County. Some have covered topics ranging not just from economic development and tourism, tourism initiatives, but uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives as well, which is not just some hot topic here. This is really important for. Uh, businesses to be really aware of in today's marketplace. This is uh, not just the right thing to do, it's good for your bottom line as well. Um, so it, it was refreshing to hear a lot of the business cases for that. Um, lastly, uh, over this next week here, uh, we at CEO will be meeting with the Cuba County uh, supervisors uh, to have a discussion around CETA services. 
um, and other opportunities that might be developing within you know, each of the supervisors' locales. So I'll be quiet now. No, you're fine. I have a quick question. Yes, um, Mike, the, uh, the small, the county small business grants, mm -hmm. I see countywide, we have a total of 10. Um, should, should we think about extending that or what's the, I mean, obviously we, we probably have some money left, I'm assuming. Do you want me to talk? You want to talk to that? <laughs> Were you, I just you have one ahead. comment. Okay. I think next week we're going to be meeting with the working group and the week after that with the review committee that's going to make recommendations on funding what that will do will determine how much of the money that you set that the legislature set aside will be allocated to these to these grants i think it would be better to to come back to the okay. legislature with a more robust report this is how much money we allocated this is how much money is left right <laughs> What do you want to do? I'm, I mean, at best, <clears throat> 10,000 per, that's, that's not a whole lot for what we allocated. And I have a comment on that. And Brian, you were in the same meeting I was in. Um, we had desi decided to proceed, pay out the applicants who qualify rather than making them wait until an additional extension went through um, because we did extend to the end of the year. Um, and then see what we have to work with and talk about what's next with that funding. What am I forgetting, Brian? It could be a possible phase two. Uh, um, some, of the, some of the very qualified applicants, I'm assuming, got their application in pretty quickly. And then as soon as we extended it, we, had, we got bombarded with emails and phone calls. So um, we decided to see what we have. And if there's money left, which we think there will be, there might be a phase two, um, and then we can, um, you know, just start the application process over again, possibly. Okay, I think the intent is to see those numbers grow from ten to, you know, however many. Heidi, I think those numbers are twenty, actually. I, I, those twenty six. Those thirty four. Have to count. In, uh, um, there's one in each Auburn. for Aurelius, one from Cato, one from <laughs> from Mens. So the, the one doesn't indicate that there's just one, but there's one from each of those areas. One from each, okay. And, and yeah. two from right? I mean, yes. two from Ledyard, two from Fort Byron. Okay. So it right. actually is 20 okay. outside the city. Yeah. So Which yeah. when you look at Auburn at 34, that's not a bad percentage. Okay. There's also, the, the one thing I would add on that is eligibility for you know grant, the grants as written. If you're going through the document itself, um, it's, you know, gross receipts 2019 through 2021, you have to be a certain size. So if you're a small business applying for it, and, you know, you're asking for 10,000 grand, that's more than you brought in an income. That could be a reason for ineligibility. So it, it's really a scaling measure as well um, in Auburn because it's, you know, the Macropolis for Cuyahoga County, that's where the density of businesses are. We would certainly would love to see more throughout the rest of the county, but we always know there's going to be more applications coming from all. Okay. Right. Uh, yes. There's no guarantee. This I know people are listening. There's no guarantee there's going to be left uh, around two because right now we'll be at 55 applicants. You said 55 eligible. But if there is money left over, there will be around two. So there's no guarantee. So I clarify that. Yep, that's fine. I just. Yes. Other topic. Um, so I see that uh, you have some DEI initiatives. Uh, are we working with any specific groups? And the one I'm thinking about specifically is UMEA, which is the um, Upstate Minority Commerce Alliance. I'm sorry, Economic Alliance. Um, they're out of Syracuse. When I was um, in HR leadership role at Gold's Pumps. Um, even up to 2018, working on the AAP, the numbers were extremely disappointing um, and trying to develop, uh, and the AAP is the, um, the plan that calculates the um, kind of the uh, where everybody fits in, you know, whether you're white, you're black, um, what your age group is, you know, in doing these reports, it was seriously skewed and wholly obvious 
that there was hardly any adver adverse diversity in our area at all. Um, so that needs help. Are we working with anybody who is specifically skilled with helping in that role? Yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that as well. One of the first discussions I had with Karen right after that meeting was, you know, and, and the feeling I've had and some of uh, the conversations I've had since then with some area businesses was a little discouraging when I said, you know, do you have the QP and I program? And it was, what is that? So, you know, Karen, Karen uh, having invested a lot of time in this area in particular is, you know, quite, you know, up to date on what's going on with it. And we discuss how, how might we, you know, put something together for it. So um, there are some conversations going on in the background. I don't want to share anything because it's, it's not fully flushed out as it is right now, but I certainly in this next month look to bring to this uh, body here a good update of something to be put together at the very least facilitate in, in any matter. It doesn't mean seed is going to do it, but help encourage support uh, at minimal an informational seminar on this for our area of businesses so they have a better understanding of uh, why this is important for their business. I, I, as I mentioned earlier, is not just the right thing to do, but it's also good business as well. Can I share with you um, and ask that you reach out to Essence Reed of Umea? Um, I'll send it to you, okay. uh, her information. Um, and I, I think because they've been um, running programs like Work Smart, Work Smart New York and really heavily involved in um, diversity and inclusion for quite a while, maybe they could uh, provide you some support and assistance and so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Would that be okay? Absolutely, thank you. All right, thank you. Trish? Hi, thank you for your report and your work. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on. I just wanted to mention the city of Auburn hit, um, has a public hearing coming up this Thursday regarding a $10 million Restore New York application, hopefully related to redevelopment of the Bombardier facility. Um, this would be obviously a huge, huge project for our region if something were to happen there. And I just um, was wondering if CETA gets involved in anything like that in terms of supporting a project like that. I would love to see the county uh, support that application um, as well. And I was curious of your experience. Absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Jenny Haynes, uh, just a close partner of ours, uh, the CETA, um, let us know about their intent to apply about this. And we're certainly engaged with them in helping to not only uh, support that project, get it moving forward, but as it relates to an attraction project to get a new tenant in there. So it's not just this dilapidated, blighted building. With these funds, it helps make it more attractive, site ready, and marketable. And part of our jobs over at CETA is go find the right tenant. And if this body is unaware of it, we get emails a good couple times a month, particularly from Empire Safe Development. It's kind of a uh, confidential sheet, but we get the requirements of companies saying we need a facility of this size. Um, and here's the estimated investment we're looking to put in and specifically the number of jobs we're going to put out. And, you know, we've had a pass on these a number of times where the Alstom Bombardier facility is a perfect fit. This is north of 500 potential jobs for a facility of that size, depending on its use. So really, really excited to, uh, you know, see that um, current owners, Alstom, are open to uh, the city, you know, going forth with this application, fingers crossed, they're able to get it and turn 15 acres back into, you know, a taxable property, new jobs that are helping to support the community at large. Really excited about it. Great, thanks Mike. I guess this is more for you. Um, uh, are there any EPA issues that we have to manage through with that? Do either of you know? 
I can't say specifically. I think the city would be better to ask because um, I, I personally haven't gone through to say, you know, what's what's in the ground from when Bombardier was used to get to build out. You know, that's exactly it. Um, so I, I, I'm sorry, I can't speak to that. Okay. Thanks. I would say, though, that there's, I mean, there are brownfield tax credit programs, mediation programs specifically that could be utilized to incentivize that if there were things that needed to be addressed. <laughs> and I know the city's had um, a brownfield program for a while now, so they're not new to the table with that. Um, they've done a lot of different projects. Uh, so that's definitely something to be aware of, for sure. Did, didn't the state or the federal government just come out with another round of funding for brownfield projects? Didn't I read something about that? You know, what, probably in the last couple of weeks. Great. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Keep an eye on it. Certainly. I will say some counties have done brownfield inventories, brownfield site inventories to try to catalog and see what their brownfield redevelopment opportunities are. And there's consulting firms out there that can help with that. Um, I don't know if it's part of the work that Steve, your group is doing um, with site selection and site development, but uh, definitely um, an opportunity, I think. I, just I, believe the, I believe the federal government has a site that has identified, you can go by state, and you can probably go by county, and they're already identified. Yeah, I think it's- Whether you get funding or that's- there's one in Victory yeah. that may reopen. Anything else for Mike? Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. And now, highlight of the evening. Of course. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, just a quick, couple quick updates uh, from the report that was sent in. Um, we are doing our tree recycling program again this year. Uh, we've already had quite a few come in, probably at least 50 trees or so. Uh, we're mulching those up as they come in. Hopefully, uh, we'll turn that mulch into the compost socks that uh, you guys so graciously uh, gave us some ARPA funding to get a bar blower uh, slash compost sock maker. So uh, hopefully, that'll be the recycling process as it's going along now. It smells really good. I was down that way uh, earlier today. Actually, and I can smell it from about 50 yards away. So uh, it's nice. We're also starting our uh, winter and the spring uh, training series for the road sediment control for contractors and uh, other individuals. Uh, we're going to become certified in uh, the four hour course that, uh, through the DEC. Uh, the third Tuesday of every month, we're putting those courses on. So uh, our first one comes up next Tuesday, actually. So uh, we've got some people signed up for that. Um, right now, we, uh, we did just complete the, uh, the dredging and the, the road installation up there at the park. Uh, Weather's been great. We're able to keep rolling. I mean, this is the time of year we're going through our equipment, greasing it up, getting it set, checking out what broke, what didn't break, fix it for next year, and we're still out using it in the field. So um, whether winter hits or not, who knows? But uh, we're going to keep rolling as soon as we, as, uh, as long as we can. Hey, a little bit. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we got about six weeks left. That's about it. You know, and then uh, really, uh, the state's supposed to drop uh, ag now point and. Uh, the climate resilient farming grants any day, any week now. So uh, we're kind of gearing up towards that meeting with some farms that we know are interested in some of the projects that qualify. And uh, one that I know is going to be due in March, April, and we're not sure when the other one's going to be due. So uh, those should be coming out soon in addition to the wrap ups. But other than that, we got glad to answer any questions you got. We are starting to get some update on that. Yeah, the, the boat's just about done. The conveyor is uh, same thing three quarters of the way, if not a little bit more done. And then he just got to start the trailer still. But uh, yeah, boats, good. pretty much square. I think he's got to put the belting on it and some other small little things. Should be ready. I, I talked to him a couple weeks ago. Should be ready for the season. Yes. Trish? Can you just give a brief update on the digester, um, the time frame for that to come back online? Uh, Sure. Uh, it's a moving target because of the weather and you know, just construction season. It, it's been warm, but it's been wet. Um, so that, that bogs things down because it's wet. But right now, uh, they just finished the one uh, holding tank. Uh, it's the equivalent size of the last 100 and, uh, 
maybe a couple hundred thousand gallons. They were actually putting the insulation on there today when I was down there. Uh, the other two million gallon tank, the larger tank, was uh, it's completed. Uh, they got some of the piping that they got to they got to do there, and then they got to insulate that. Um, and they're going to start once those are up and running. He thinks they might that one might be able to start to build next as early as next week. Um, then they're going to knock down one of the other tanks and rebuild a new one in its footprint. Um, they're hoping to be up and running by. You know, obviously this is all weather dependent and. and live materials, all that uh, that stuff, but should be should be up and running. He's targeting June timeframe. I got a meeting with those guys. Uh, they're coming in uh, next Wednesday. Touch base with uh, just on the on the project in general, in the future of it. So it's coming along. Now they're they're doing the outbuilding. Uh, they're doing an addition. So when they're doing the depackaging, uh, they're actually the, the frame is up. Uh, well, at least the steel's up around the outside of the old building, and then they just got to close that and uh, the Ramps they had the concrete poured yesterday uh, for offloading ramps out, out back to facilitate the offloading of some of the materials. So a lot of work's being done down there this year. I, I don't know what the overall investment is, but it's upwards of 10 million or, or maybe even more that they're putting back into it. Any more questions for Doug? All right. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. And Welch, you're still on? Yep. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, so uh, just the first thing, and I can't uh, take credit for this idea. This is actually Shereen's uh, idea after seeing, uh, I think, the my December committee report, uh, where I had something about... Um, our work with our nutrition program, food bank, and Shereen said, well, why don't we put together a food drive? So um, I want to start by um, recognizing the generosity of the um, employees at Cayuga County and uh, with their help and a little bit of Shereen's help with the logistics. Um, we donated uh, 525 pounds of food uh, to the community action program. Um, and from there, um, they distributed it to um, food pantries in Cuyahoga County. And that was, I want to say we dropped that off on the Wednesday before Christmas. So right before the holidays, it was a great time uh, for them. They were very appreciative because they didn't have um, a lot of um, extra food like that they might get from the grocery store where things are getting up close to the uh, expiration date. So uh, that was a, was a great thing to uh, wrap up the year and uh, look forward to maybe doing that again next year. Um, Doug had in his written report a little more detail than I do on, on this item. Um, there's going to be a winter crop meeting um, at the Holiday Inn on January 26th. Um, the main focus of the meeting will be soil health, um, and then a few speakers on some um, emerging pest management problems that we have uh, with some of our crops in the county. Um, and like I said, Doug had more details on the speaker. We appreciate um, this good example of extension and soil and water working together. Um, our regional team helped put that program together. Um, so I Water was able to help support it with a little bit of funding from the Soil Health Grant, and they provide some input on uh, the topics too. So look forward to a successful meeting on the uh, 26th. Um, and then just quickly, uh, usually uh, my December is a little bit shorter because we're not doing as many uh, programs uh, with the holiday season and my staff are involved on reporting um, into a database that Cornell Cooperative Extension Administration uh, maintains all their um, program outcomes and impacts from past federal fiscal year. Um, that's something we do towards the end of calendar year. Um, and then that information goes on both to the State University of New York and to uh, USDA. 
Um, so, uh, and that'll be, you'll be seeing some of that next month in our uh, annual report. All right, thank you, Dan. Any questions for Dan? Jim? Just on, on the 26th, is that, is there, what's the time on that? Is that a daytime meeting, an evening meeting? It's a daytime meeting, uh, Jim. I want to say 9 to 34 o'clock. I'm sorry, I didn't catch three or four. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Anything else? Trish? Um, just a comment that we voted, I think it was last year, to fund um, a regional team, the New York Dairy and Field Crop team for our county uh, farmers to participate in. I would love it if we could have a presentation from them, um, invite them in to talk about the work that they're doing here. Um, I've heard a little bit here and there, and it sounds like they're doing really great work um, across the county. And uh, just mention that um, tonight for consideration. Anything else for Dan? Dan? Yep. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, before I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, which a lot of us are excited about, um, just let people know that next month our meeting will be with government ops on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Um, and obviously the other um, Tuesday will be public works and uh, judicial and public safety. So with that said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Yes,